<laughs> All right. It says the live video is starting. And here we are. Hello, Facebook. This is a public video. Um, it's a live video here on my public Facebook profile. And it's been a little while since I've been here publicly with you because I've been spending so much time in the avoidant attachment in relationships group. We have a thriving community, over 6,000 people now, and people learning about their attachment styles and learning and growing. But I wanted to come back to the public profile to spend some time with you. And the subject of this video is, what does it mean to process emotions? I, I talk about emotional intelligence and processing emotions. You've probably heard other people talk about processing emotions. What does that even mean? The reason why this was inspired is because a member of the Avoidant Attachment and Relationships group um, brought up to me that she's a little bit further along in her healing journey and she noticed that a lot of people maybe don't even have a basic understanding of their thoughts, the structure of their mind, their emotions, uh, how they interact with their emotions, what their emotions mean. And that that was very helpful to her on her healing journey. I noticed that for me, it was very helpful to me. And I, you know, here I am to deliver some information to you. So we'll talk about what does it mean to process emotions. Before that, we'll, we'll talk about what are emotions? Why do we have emotions? Um, what can we do with them? What does it mean to process them? And why do we even care? What difference does it make? So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Daniel Robertson. I'm an attorney turned relationship coach. I'm the host of the Courageous Love community. So if you're looking to heal your attachment style, that's a weekly group coaching community. Uh, we'd love to have you. It's only $97 a month. So if you want to invest at that level. As I talk about processing emotions and the power of processing emotions, I will also let you know about an opportunity. I have a new partnership with an expert emotional mentor. And he's been doing this for over 10 years, really powerful at removing emotional blocks that have been stuck in our life, keeping us from getting what we wanted probably for decades. You know, for most of us, we get these emotional blocks from traumas, things that happen in our life, unprocessed emotions, and they will hold us back and stick there for decades. So we'll talk about that. I want you to know there's an opportunity to work with me in partnership with um, him. His name's Richard. He's, he's over in England expert been doing this for well over 10 years but 10 years full-time so let you know about that and you can send me a private message if you have questions if you're watching live please you know go ahead this is a public video so you know anybody here on my public profile can participate but would love to hear if you're live drop a comment that you're live if you're watching the replay just let me know throw some likes my way somebody was so kind to send me stars the other day and um that was wonderful so i see i see some viewers here appreciate you watching and this will stay on my profile for a little bit so you can you can come back and watch later but what are emotions what does it mean to process emotion and what are emotions and if facebook will let me i'll try to share a few slides oh no i don't even see how to share the slides now that i'm on this page now that i went live i don't see the button to share the slides so maybe we will forget about them but what are emotions so what are emotions? Emotions are a particular type of feeling. Okay, we have lots of feelings that happen in our bodies, right? And some of those are very primitive. They even primitive life forms have like reactions to something that's too hot or too cold. Even primitive life forms will feel that and move away. We have biological programs like a feeling of hunger. Emotions are more sophisticated. They're, they're slightly more advanced than that. Emotions really developed as a way to interact socially and, uh, as I'll explain, to tell ourselves that there's something that we need. So you'll notice that emotions that feel good are telling us, oh, your needs are getting met. That feels good. And emotions that don't feel so good are saying your needs are not getting met. That doesn't feel good. You need to do something to tend to your needs. And if you have a background in psychology, you took Psych 101, you know Maslow established that needs exist on a hierarchy. We start with our physiological needs like air and water. We move up, we need safety and security. Then we need love and belonging, friendships, intimate relationships, and so on. 
then from there we're working up to developing our esteem, our respect, prestige, the feeling of accomplishment, and finally at the pinnacle of Maslow's hierarchy would be self-actualization, where we are becoming the best version of ourselves, getting to know ourselves on a deeper level, becoming more authentic. So that's where our needs kind of exist on a hierarchy and you'll, you'll notice that there are times where you're existing in survival mode and you want to move up the ladder so that you can thrive, really enjoy your life. And when those needs are getting met, well, let's say when those needs are not getting met, okay, you feel anxiety because you don't have, you need those, some of those needs for safety and security met. You start, you start to get meet those needs and then that anxiety can subside. That, that emotion doesn't need to be there to tell you that you need that safety and security. You feel some longing. You feel uh, some loneliness. Now you, that's telling you, okay, I need to meet this need for love and belonging in my life and so on. Right? So our emotions are there to tell us these things. Well, what, what are these emotions? Emotions, they're really forms of energy. Nothing mystical about that. It's just it's energy. Energy is physical, right? These forms of energy that come up in our body, and there are sensations associated with these emotions, right? And these sensations associated with these emotions could be, you know, they, they could vary person to person. You could notice your feelings of different emotions, happiness, sadness, anger, whatever emotion you're feeling in different places in your body. Some people might carry more uh, stress or anxiety in their shoulders, some more. It could be a feeling of uh, the stomach churning, right? It could be a, uh, a fog around the heart, you know, I mean, could be different places in your body, different feelings, different sensations associated with those emotions. But these are energy forms that arise in the body. And, and why are we there? Well, why are the emotions there? Well, we explained, they're, they're telling you something that you need in order to either survive or thrive, right? And they're giving you that valuable information. So, and and here I go. I had I had a few slides up because if you join the Courageous Love community, you'll see we do weekly group coaching and these are part of slides. And so I had all these beautiful slides here to share with you. And yet, now that I'm on this page, Facebook doesn't let me share it. So thanks to those of you who are watching. Let's see if I can see, if you have any comments, I'm happy to take um happy okay there's no comments drop a live if you're live or a replay if you're watching the replay we're talking about emotions and what does it mean to process our emotions why does that even matter why do i care so can't share the slides with you because Facebook and we have these emotions come up, right? Okay, Cherry, great to see you. Appreciate you interacting. And we have these emotions come up. And so what do we do with them? Well, we have three basic things we can do with them. And one of those things that we can do with our emotions, which is very common for a lot of people because maybe your personality is inclined that way, maybe you've never been taught what to do with your emotions. What's up, Melissa? Good to see you. And um, maybe this has been modeled for you of what to do with your emotions. And maybe emotions get dismissed. So what, what, if this has been modeled for you, what you might do is avoid the emotions, deny that they exist, pretend that they don't exist, try to distract yourself from these emotions, right? Why would we do this? Well, because a lot of our emotions are uncomfortable. And you'll notice if you try to list out all the different kinds of emotions, there are more names for uncomfortable emotions than there are for comfortable emotions, right? For emotions that feel good. Because again, emotions that feel good tell us our needs are getting met. Emotions that don't feel good are telling us that you have needs that you want to get met in order to feel better, right? And so we are going to have more names for that. And um, perhaps there are actually more sensations for that, potentially. So what can we do? Number one, we can avoid. We can try to push them down, push them away. And if you've been taught things like 
this this is one I'll tell you this one just gets me is people say feelings aren't facts that one gets me because if you if I say I'm feeling happy I'm feeling sad I'm feeling angry how can you tell me that's not a fact that is a fact that's how I'm feeling right when people say feelings aren't facts I don't like it because it's like it's dismissing the existence of the feeling but when people say that what they really mean is something that's true which is they'll say I well, I feel like I feel like I felt like my marriage was going well okay you felt but then what you just described is not a sensation what you described is is the thought it's a it's in the informational content of the thought the informational content of that thought was that you thought the marriage was going well and you're describing it as a feeling I feel like I felt like my marriage was going well but really you were maybe in some delusion there was an illusion there that was going on but you really did feel that way so the the feeling was maybe you felt good you felt good you felt happy so that feeling was actually a fact the thought that you had was not a fact it actually wasn't going well if you know maybe that marriage ended in divorce uh, common experience and it could be anything it could be you know I I thought that my job was going well or I or, or maybe you're doing a violin performance and you felt like I felt like I performed terribly well the feeling may have been anxiety or fear that's a fact that's something you were feeling but the thought that you performed terribly well maybe the people in the audience thought you performed wonderfully in which case you know there's some subjectivity to that but at the same time did you really perform terribly or was that just a thought so the thought may or may not be a fact but the feelings those are facts those are really there they exist so what can you do so number one is you could avoid them and why would we do that because they don't feel good and we've been taught to avoid them and and we've been taught these sayings like feelings aren't facts taught to dismiss our feelings well we just talked about how our feelings are there to give us information about what we need so if you're dismissing your feelings then you're making decisions in your life without even taking in that informational content you're, you're just pushing that that information away that could be very valuable information for your life so this is where you get these questions of should I trust my feelings and I talk about there being different um, you know spectrums to this because you could have somebody who maybe there's a great job opportunity that would be great for them uh, but they'd have to move to a new city and they're afraid about whether they can perform well in the new job so they trust their fear meaning that they act on that feeling of fear and decide not to take the job when really they would have done well and it would have been good for them okay that's a time where you felt the fear and you decided to act based on that fear to not do the thing that was that was scary that's not a great time so that's not a great time to trust our feelings but let's talk about another example we probably know people who have gone and gotten married to somebody when they kind of had this like uneasy feeling could have been a variety of sensations sick to the stomach stress in the shoulders whatever it is this uneasy feeling saying I shouldn't marry this person and they end up getting married and they end up unhappy right surprise surprise well they've been taught to dismiss their feelings they've been taught not to trust their feelings so then they don't listen and they ignore that informational content that the feeling was trying to give them and then they make a decision that ends up hurting them and probably other people too. So I say, do you trust your feelings? No, but you want the information from the feelings. The information from the feelings is very valuable. So you want that information. You don't want to avoid it. What happens if we avoid? I think avoiding, imagine somebody who's angry and they're pre pushing down their anger. This is kind of like putting a cork on a volcano. You know, most of the time, either one of two things will happen the pressure will build up the pressure will build up and maybe there will be a little bit of venting out the side of the volcano in the form of passive aggressive comments because if i can't express how i really feel then i'll just make passive aggressive indirect comments and remarks and actions or what happens is people bottle it up bottle it up bottle it up put the cork on the volcano and eventually it explodes so right you know what good is that or it could be sadness and you deep down you have this sadness and you don't know why you've got this hopelessness and you're stuck where you are in this morass of life 
not moving anything forward, feeling like there's nothing you could do. That would be another example of why are you going to avoid it? Why would you avoid it? Because it's just going to keep you stuck, right? So that's one, one thing we can do with our emotions is to avoid them. Then another thing we can do with our emotions is to recycle them. So recycling our emotions happens when the emotion comes up and instead of processing it and letting it pass, we recycle it. So what would happen? If, if we want to recycle our anger, what happens is we feel the anger and we, cre we create a reinforcing loop with our thoughts. So our thoughts might say, I'm angry because they did this to me and they're such a villain and I, they should have never treated me like this and this is all their fault. So we create these thoughts and these thoughts run and then they get wired into our brain so we keep thinking them and the thoughts reinforce the anger and the anger gives us a feeling of justification in maintaining our thoughts and so we recycle them and recycle them and recycle them and then if we keep doing that the anger of course stays in the body dr bestel van der kolk wrote the book the body keeps the score what happens with our emotions is that the body stays that the emotions stay in the body if we don't process them and this person isn't necessarily avoiding their anger. Maybe they're expressing it, but it becomes a part of who they are. They're, they're now known as an angry person, right? Because they're recycling it. And they have this reinforcing loop of the thought process, uh, reinforcing the feelings and the feelings of anger, reinforcing the thought process, and they just stay there. Don't process it, just recycle it. Could be sadness too. You could say, oh, I'm, I'm so worthless. I'm Nobody likes me. And... Um, nothing good ever happens to me and I don't have anything valuable to add to the world. So now I feel sad, I feel hopeless, and and then that sadness and hopelessness reinforces the thought process. And it reinforces and reinforces, and now this is a person, this is an Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh, the, the, the donkey who's just uh, melancholy all the time and depressed, right? It becomes part of who they are when they're recycling it like that. Or happiness, you know, it's like, let's recycle some happiness maybe, right? Now, happiness, just like everything else, you want to you wanna process it for the reasons I'll explain in a little bit. But um, you can become joyful and loving and enlightened and, and all of these uh, and peaceful as part of your way of being. But let's make it intentional. Let's make it intentional rather than uh, recycling unprocessed emotions when when i'll just give you the tip is that when happiness or joy doesn't get processed we could possibly get stuck in illusion where we are tricking ourselves into thinking that we're <laughs> we're we're doing great when something's actually not doing great so we don't want to be delusional or stuck in illusion that's why it's important to process so those are the three well those are two we can avoid our emotions we can recycle them which i just explained and they, either way, they stay in the body. It, and the third thing we can do is we can process them. So again, I'm emotions, we are such complex being and emotions are very complex. And what happens is, um, you know, emotions give us this information, but the information, it can be very complex in, in terms of deciding now that I have this information, what do I do with it? Because the way that this information interacts with the world is quite complicated often. It's not always straightforward. So that, that does become complex and dynamic. Um, the point being is what do we do to process our emotions? And I think when I think about processing emotions, I think there are two basic parts, right? The one part is to, to gather the information that the emotions are giving us. Right? The, okay, this emotion is telling me something, and I want that information. I don't want to ignore that. I don't want to avoid that, because then I'm making a decision without that valuable information. So why would I do that? By the way, if anybody's watching and you do have questions, please feel free to throw down your questions. And for those of you who are watching who you're like, I want to keep working on this, just know I have the Courageous Love Community. It's weekly group coaching. It's $97 a month. And you can keep working on this on a weekly basis. And it's you get to know your emotions, get to know how to process your emotions, get to be aware, oh, what are my emotions telling me? And this gives you so much more power and control over your own life, 
over how you feel, over how you're showing up in your relationships, over the relationships and the jobs and the things that you bring into your life because you're you're navigating your emotions with more mastery, with more understanding um, than, than somebody who's not got this level of emotional intelligence. So, what's up, Jack? You were there for me in the private video. I just did this private video in the Avoidant Attachment and Relationships group, which is a free group, by the way, for people. Um, you know, it's a support group for people who have somebody in their life with avoidant attachment and, and, and some people who have avoidant attachment are in the group and learning a lot. And it takes guts to be in there because it's quite a, um, you know, people get, people get real in there, people express their feelings, so. Okay, so what does it mean to process our emotions? Okay, gather the information, right? So we want to gather the information that the emotions are giving us and we want to, um, you take that information. Okay, so we want that information. We don't want to ignore it because then we're making a decision without that valuable information. Now what do we do? Now the emotion has served its purpose. So if we want it to pass through the body, then we can naturally allow that. Our bodies naturally do this by feeling the feeling, not avoiding or distracting ourselves, not recycling it, Feel the feeling, bring your attention, bring your awareness, wrap your loving awareness around that feeling, whatever you have to do, bring that your attention to that feeling and feel it. And as you feel it, your body will naturally process it. And you can, you can, you can think about, you can bring your attention to what does this feel like? Does it feel foggy or electric or sharp or tense or constricted or like nauseous? Like what is this feeling? You know, or does it feel like uh, joy, like this uplifting, like this vibrance, like sparkling, you know, I mean, what is this feeling that you feel? Where is it in your body? You can bring your attention there. As you do, as you sit with the feeling and bring your attention to it, our bodies will, and allow yourself to feel it, then our bodies will naturally process it. For me, my experience of processing feelings feels usually like a dissolving, like the feeling just it's there and it slowly dissolves or dissipates. Like our, our bodies naturally do this if we don't distract ourselves or avoid it, or if we don't recycle it, if we process it by feeling it. So you feel, you feel it and you, that's the processing, the dissolving, the dissolution of it, the dissipation of it, and it moves, it moves through the body, it moves out of the body and it, and it passes. That's what it means to me to process emotions. So you get the information that you need. Thank you, emotion. Now I process it and let it go. Why does this matter? Why does this matter? Well, I'm going to talk about, I'll just talk about five um, different, you know, feelings, five different feelings. I'll, there, there are many different frameworks or theories for how many different emotions there are. So I'm going to just for today, borrow from Vivian Dittmar's work because Vivian Dittmar, she's just incredible. Her work on emotions and feelings has been incredible. And she talks about five, five basic emotions, anger, sadness, fear, joy, and shame. And so let's just talk about what happens when we don't process these feelings. Now, it's interesting when people, there, there are a lot of folks who say they devalue emotions and they say, don't, you know, don't put so much stock or value in your emotions. And I can understand why, because our emotions, when they are unprocessed, not properly processed, they are, um, they can have negative impacts on us and others. So let's talk about some. Anger. What happens when we don't process our anger, when we don't take the information and let it pass, when we don't process our anger, we can become very destructive to ourselves or others. We can say things, I wish I never said those things when I was angry. So it can become very destructive to others, to our relationships and so on, right? So that would be a reason why, that, that this is why people say, don't trust your emotions, don't, your, you know, your feelings aren't facts, don't act on your emotions. Well, because they see the destructive elements of the emotions and I can understand this, right? Anger is one that becomes destructive if it's not processed. Sadness. What happens when we have unprocessed sadness? 
This leads us into hopelessness and passive resignation. We don't act. We think, I'm just sad, I'm hopeless, there's nothing I can do. And we don't process the sadness. We become passive and resigned. We think that we're just stuck where we are. What about what happens with fear? Unprocessed fear, when we just feel the when we're like, feel the fear, freak out. I don't want to feel this. I'm going to ignore it, distract myself. What happens with unprocessed fear? It leads us into paralysis. We don't act. I'm afraid. I'm afraid of what's coming. So I don't act. This is why it's so important to process our emotions. We're paralyzed. What about joy? Again, I mentioned this. Joy, if we don't process our joy, if we're just like living in our joy without processing it, really understanding the information that's there, we could end up living in illusion. I just, what popped into my head was uh, the movie Shutter Island, <laughs> where where Leonardo DiCaprio is brought to the island where he believes that he's helping to solve uh, a mystery on this island, and that's not really what's happening. So I won't spoil it for you, but... Um, we can live in illusion if we don't process it. So uh, this is this to me is the positive thinking crowd. This is this is oh just think positive. Now there are a lot of great positive thinking, um, you know, uh, po po positive thinking I guess teachers I should say, who who do teach to pay attention to your emotions. So what what will happen is if if you listen to some of these positive thinking folks who just say, all you have to do is work on your mindset, that's it. Don't worry about the somatic element, the body element of it, is that positive thinking doesn't work. You'll notice that it doesn't work. That if, if I just tell myself, if I just tell myself these positive things without and ignore the emotions, that won't work. And, and we know this. And, as we move out of this Freudian era of psychology that's so focused on the mind and we and we're learning more about the body and our emotions we're seeing that our think about how big your nervous system is running throughout your whole body and how much information is going from body to brain versus from brain down to body it's like 80 90% of information is coming from your body up to your brain only 10 to 20% of your brain is in charge of how you feel, right? And so, for example, you could tell tell yourself all the time, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy, but if you don't feel happy, you're not gonna be happy. Your body, your your subconscious and the emotions that are that are there are going to be in charge. Those they're gonna win out every time. Same thing if I if I tell myself, I'm safe, I'm safe, I'm safe, but if I don't feel safe in my body, I don't feel safe. That's that's there. That's a real feeling. So this is why it's important to process, right? And positive thinking or mindset work by itself is not enough. And some, like I said, some positive mindset teachers do incorporate emotions in a, in a healthy way, and some don't. The ones who don't incorporate emotions and who think that you don't even have to worry about your emotions, that you can just control them with your brain, uh, not in my experience, not in my experience. That's short-sighted and may have temporary benefits. And many of you have probably seen this without me naming names. You've probably seen this where you go to a positive mindset, motivational kind of talk or whatever. You feel good for a little bit and then it doesn't last. Right? The emotional work has to be processed because if these emotions aren't processed from the past, again, body keeps a score, they stay, they stay stuck in the body and that will keep you They'll keep you stuck. They'll, 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 they'll act as emotional blocks to moving forward to accomplish what you want to accomplish. Okay, last one is shame. What happens if we have shame that we maintain and without processing the shame? Well, John Bradshaw wrote the book, Healing the Shame That Binds Us, right? The shame will bind us. And what does it do? What does it do? This is the toxic shame. This is the unprocessed shame. Is this this toxic or unprocessed shame it will lead us into self-abasement and self-judgment right so and then when we start to judge ourselves not only do we feel terrible about ourselves but then we start to criticize and judge others a lot right that's one of our coping mechanisms to deal with this shame that's unprocessed so you can just see i mean no shame is is just 
the worst. And I know some of you are probably di making distinctions in your mind. You're thinking, well, there's shame and there's guilt and there's differences there. And yeah, there's differences. Um, and those are valuable to distinguish. Um, but we can get more into that another time. So that's what happens if we don't process them, which is completely understandable why people say you don't want all these emotions. Look at all the negative things that happen. But that's when they're unprocessed, right? When they stay stuck in the body, that's when they're unprocessed. So we want to process our emotions. And again, if you want to go deeper on this work, like I said, um, I'm, I'm partnering with an emotional, uh, an expert emotional mentor named Richard Davis uh, over in England. He's been doing this for years. He's just an expert at removing these emotional blocks. So we're partnering together to help people remove stuff that's been stuck for decades, right? And um, what happens when we process these emotions is, let's talk about anger. Well, anger, when anger comes up, if we process it, we get the information that we need. Oh, this, this injustice is happening. Okay, now I'm aware of this injustice because I'm feeling angry. And now the anger spurs us into action. Thank you, anger, for the information. I've processed you. I don't need to use you in a destructive way, but I can use you to take action. And sometimes anger, if we are stuck in grief, sometimes anger is that thing that we need to reach. Reach out of the hopelessness into the anger. Yeah, oh, yeah, now that I have anger, now that I've created a little bit of separation, now I can have, to have the energy and the motivation and the drive to take action. Well, thank you, anger. That was very helpful. Let me process you. Let me let let you go and then take the action, right? You can still take action while you're in the anger and you process it as you go. I'm not saying it has to be in a particular order or anything, but um, that's one positive benefit of anger. These, these emotions have these positive benefits. What about sadness? If I'm feeling sadness, if I don't press push it down and push it away, if I feel the sadness, what does it help us do? It helps us calm down and accept the things we cannot change. Well, thank you, sadness. I needed that. I needed to accept the things that I couldn't change so that I could move on. Um, what about fear? Well, if we have fear, fear is wonderful. It just warned us there's something uncertain coming up, something you haven't experienced before coming up. That's why you feel the fear. Okay. Thank you, fear, for this information. Now I know that I can prepare for this uncertainty. Prepare in whatever way I need to prepare. And now I can face it with courage and bravery. Without, without fear, there's no courage and bravery, right? So now I can, the fear just gave me the information I needed to face the uncertainty and to have the courage that I need to move forward. And that's the inspiration for the Courageous Love community. It was inspired by my clients, who I realized you are so courageous because you're facing your fear. You're facing these feelings that you pushed down or avoided or distracted yourself from and that have created blocks in your life for years, decades, and you're facing them. It's like Joseph Campbell said, the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. You have the courage to enter the cave that you're afraid to go into, but you've got the courage and you do it. And you find the treasure that you've been looking for all along. Get that 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 fear out of the way. So thank you, fear, for giving me the information I need to face the uncertainty and the courage, the opportunity to have courage to go and do it. What about joy? Joy is joy is telling us that our needs are getting met. That's why we feel good. Everything is the way I want it to be. I feel so good. So when we process the joy. We get to enjoy, oh my gosh, I'm just like feeling alive. I'm feeling vibrant. I feel like my needs are getting met. This is wonderful. We get to enjoy it. but And we're still in touch with reality, right? Because we're, we're here. We're, we're real. We're processing it. We're still, we're still grounded in reality. So thank you, Joy. What a good feeling that is. It's interesting. Brene Brown was asked, what's the hardest feeling for people to feel? And for a lot of people, she said, it's joy. And it's very unfamiliar for a lot of people to feel joy. So what a great experience to be able to process that joy and remove the things that are blocking us from experiencing it. 
Lastly, shame. So shame, we talk about toxic shame, the shame that binds us, which is what it does when it's toxic, when it's stuck, when it's unprocessed. But the shame is giving us valuable information, whether it's shame or guilt, right? Shame, shame again says uh, that I am bad and guilt says I did something bad. Shame, you know, shame is not about you being a bad person. Well, if you feel shame, I want you to know that you're not a bad person. The fact that you feel shame, thank you that you feel shame because when we all make mistakes, when we all pe hurt people that we didn't want to hurt, when we all cause damage that we never wanted to cause, it's natural to feel shame. So thank you, shame, that thank you that I'm a real person, that I have this feeling, that I'm not, not a sociopath or a psychopath, that I actually feel this because it means you're a human being, not an automaton. And so you feel this shame. And thank you, shame, because what information did you just give me? You just told me that I need to reflect. I need to reflect on my actions because my actions aren't actions that I'm proud of. So now I can have the opportunity not to judge myself and condemn myself and debase myself. I have the opportunity now to reflect on my actions and to decide how I want to act differently in the future. Thank you for the opportunity to self-reflect. Thank you, Shane. That's very valuable information. Now I can process you. Shame feels terrible. Shame feels absolutely terrible. I don't know what it feels like to you. It feel, feels like black tar. It's like, ugh, awful. Yuck. Maybe even worse. Like, shame feels awful. But if you feel it and process it and let it go, thank you, shame, for making me a human, for giving me the opportunity to self-reflect so I can process you and let you go and now become a better version of myself, the person who I want to be, a person who's loving people, right? The type of person I want to be going forward. So very valuable. I hope that helps you understand what emotions are, why we have them, what it means to process our emotions and why that matters. And if you are looking to do more of that, I apologize, I've already mentioned this more times in the video, but we have the Courageous Love Community for weekly group coaching. I have a, a partnership now. What, what it is is doing six sessions with an expert emotional mentor, Richard Davis, over in England. He and I have partnered up. I'm helping people with the relational elements, identifying the emotional block, and he's an expert at helping people remove their emotional blocks quickly. I'm learning how to do this, but he's just, if you want to accelerate that process, if you want to remove emotional blocks that have been in your life, holding you back from the things that you want for decades, this is what you need. So you do two sessions with me, two sessions with him, then finish up with two more sessions, integrating this into your life. We're partnering up, working together and helping people really accelerate your process. When you remove that emotional block, you're like, wow, I feel like a different person. I'm like, I did not realize this thing that I've been living with for so long would be have such an impact on the way that I feel. And now you feel different and you feel free to go do the thing. So what, what kinds of things are happening if you have emotional blocks? Procrastination, telling yourself things like, okay, uh, I want to I want to be rich someday, but you haven't started the business. I I want to save money, but you're still in debt. You're not saving. I want to have a healthy relationship, but you still getting keep getting into relationships with jerks. That's a uh, technical <laughs> technical term, right? People who don't meet your needs, people who aren't a good match for you. So you're 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 saying you want one thing and you're not doing it. That's to me. A likely indication majority of the time we you know we talk we talk I'll talk talk with you if you want to talk and see what's getting in the way for you but majority of the time there's an emotional block there from whether it's from a past trauma where you've become fragmented or or whether it's uh, just a stuck emotion from a past experience that hasn't been processed so um, want you to know those resources are, are there for you and if anything else, I hope you will stay in contact with me uh, on Facebook. F you know, friend me, follow, interact, 
with my stuff, I would love to interact with you. And um, I hope this has been helpful. And it's a pleasure to be here with everybody. And I'll wait for just one or two more moments to see if there are any comments or questions before I go ahead and sign off. But I hope this has been a helpful discussion about what are emotions, where do they come from, what are they for, what do we do with them, why, why does it matter. And with that, I believe that there are no comments. I see a few people watching. And um, please feel free to share this if this was helpful to you. And um, I look forward to spending more time with you again soon. Much love to everyone who's here. You are beautiful people. You are seekers. You are courageous to be willing to look into yourself. And you deserve to be happy. It's there for you. You will have to do some work to get it. <laughs> because that's just the way it works. It's just the way it is. So much love to you all. I hope you have a beautiful day. Keep in contact, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.